what is going on everyone today we have a new topic on this channel it is railways and trains um i would like to do this some more but for me it's trains are really bad luck for me <laughs> because i explained this on my instagram either the train is already passed or it's already passed the crossing and it's leaving the crossing the whole train or I can hear it, but I'm so close to it, or I can barely see it. So, yeah, that's basically trains for me, but I can still talk about them. So, this first episode on trains will be high-speed rail corridors that would be successful. Or, high-speed rail corridors in the U.S., I should say. So, as the first episode, I'm going to talk about one that has not been proposed. It's only been a dream of mine. It is the Gulf Coast. And before we get into that, why? Why high speed rail? Well, in some places it's too far to drive, or it's too short to fly, or it's just a waste of money, like Florida. The most cities are two or three hours apart, which is too far to drive, but it's too short to fly, because that will be just 30 minutes, and why would you go through security and go through all of that, and there's somebody unruly that won't cooperate, that's another delay. Yeah, so, and I know some people are saying, well, it's expensive. Well, it is expensive, but it pays off if you... I'm going to talk about this in another episode that led to the Charlotte, because I-85 is already bad. The traffic, even though I've been down I-85 a couple times through Atlanta a couple times. And it, it's not that bad, unless you're stuck in rush hour. You do not, you want to stay away from Atlanta during rush hour. Charlotte, it's fine, but something like Atlanta you want to stay away from. Because even though Atlanta does have a rapid transit system, like Charlotte does not, it's still, you want to avoid it. So let's go to the first thing I said. Gold Coast Corridor from Houston to Jacksonville. The first thing is why. Well, Houston to Jacksonville is 12 hours by car. Straight. Which, straight means if you just go without stopping to use the bathroom or... Stopping to get gas or stretch, stretch your legs, eat, or get some food, eat, or stop to take a picture or something. Yeah, so anyway, Interstate 10 is always slow or choked around New Orleans and Mobile due to the infrastructure, especially in Mobile because they have a tunnel that's getting to be 50 years old. It's not great. And as you can see, the state and the Sunset Limited service between New Orleans and Jacksonville has been suspended since 2005 after Hurricane Katrina because the tracks literally run right up against the water. Which, that would be a beautiful view, so yeah, but obviously this line wouldn't run close to the water. I wouldn't use old bridges, it would use new bridges. Yeah, so that would be quicker, much quicker, and there's also a few major cities like Houston, New Orleans, Mobile, Biloxi, Gulfport, I forgot to mention those, Pensacola, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. So let's go to the station stops, shall we, where I think the stations will be for a commuter rail service. So first of all, station stops in Texas. Yes, I put Texarail on there. Texarail is uh, is in Dallas in the DFW, Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. If you don't know what that is, that is Dallas and Fort Worth in Arlington Metro area. That's what that is. So yeah, it's really big. It's bigger than Rhode Island and Connecticut. Combined, so yeah, that's really big, and it's bigger than Manhattan. So yeah, the station stops, excluding Houston and 
early and like Charles Louis, you know, would be Mont Bellevue, Winnie, Texas, Beaumont, Orange, and Vinton, and obviously like Charles in Houston would be the end and beginning points. Um, obviously, this is my own drawn up plans. I don't know if somebody will look at this and say, hey, that's a really good idea. Well, I'm going to get back to the cost later because I'm not sure how much it would be. Now let's get, and that's about, I don't know, like 200, 150 miles maybe. Lake Charles, Houston, Lake Charles, I'm not sure. And the trains could run at maybe 70 top speed. But obviously there will be a high speed service like the Cell Express and the regional service like the Northeast Regional. And then there will also be Sleep, and, uh, and there would also be the Sunset Limited. Also. So let's get going. Do the second stop. So the New Orleans, I mean, no, this is Louisiana stops would be. These would be a little bit more. Stops with certainly Charles and then in Gulfport, Mississippi. And there will be stops in Lake Charles. Uh, I forgot what that is. Lennings, I think. And Crowley, Lafayette. And then we'll cross the Atchafalaya Basin. The Atchafalaya Basin, close to where our tent is on a bridge. And then we'll stop in Baton Rouge. I think that's Brainville. Brainville. And... Gonzalez, I think. I'm not sure what these cities are. So if you could help me by this. And there could be a stop in um, maybe La Place. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, Midderry. I didn't put that in there. In New Orleans. And then it would cross where US 90 is. Or it would cross where I 10 is. Crosses the like parking tree. And then it would stop in Slidell. And then we'll continue on the Gulfport. And I, like I said, there a service between um, New Orleans and Jacksonville has been suspended. So this is Mississippi, Alabama. It would, it would begin in Gulfport, go through Biloxi, Pasigula, stop in Grass Bay. And Theodore, and then to Mobile, and then it would stop at Spanish Fort, Alabama. So now we go on to Florida. I feel like Florida would be the most. Obviously, Brightline could extend their service all the way to Jacksonville. They could use the whole F FEC mainline that's Florida East Coast Railroad mainline. Which the company that owns Brightline they used to own um, FEC, so they can have like an agreement where they uh, they partially owned FEC a few years ago. So yeah, um, it'll be they it would begin in Pensacola. This ending points would be Pensacola and Jacksonville. Now, the thing is that you might think this would be good to serve the beach as well. If there's not a lot of room, they could build stations as close as they could. So it would start in Pensacola, there would be maybe a stop in Fort Walton Beach, or Destin close to that. Or there would be a stop at the Fort Walton Beach, Internet, Fort Walton Beach and Destin Airport. And there could be also a stop at the Northwest Florida Beaches International Airport, which is close to Panama City Beach, and that would make a stop in Panama City. And then I don't know why I put a black dot there. The black dots are where the stops are. And then it would continue on through the forest into the Florida State Capital, Tallahassee, and then stop in 
Not sure what other stop seas are, and then it would stop in Lake City and then Jacksonville. And I said if uh, Bright Line could continue after they my after they finish Tampa because there's they still doing the they're still finishing the route to Orlando. Which I feel like that will be the most profitable route. Because they could finally get it up, get the um, streamlined Siemens SC44 chargers up to 125 or 210, maybe. But there's only one street section of track, which is at only 26 miles. I measured it. If you can measure it yourself, you could. I'll Google Maps. But yeah, and they could do around all the way up to Jacksonville, then do a Gulf Coast line too. But that would probably be in like 10 or 20 years. I don't know, but Brightline seems to be doing pretty well, unlike um, California. I think every rail fan knows about California high speed rail. Not doing good. Slow, spending more money than they should. Yeah. Let's go. Could this become a reality? Um, I'm not really sure. Because this is an idea I've been figuring out for a long time. And I'm not sure what the cost would be. If somebody could estimate for me, I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 100 billion. Or maybe even more than 100 billion. And first of all, uh, when we're talking about things like this, we always have to bring up politics. I'm not going to go too deep because I don't want anybody to scream at me, but I think some state politicians would agree with this. This could help traffic on I-10. This could serve good for uh, in vacation season in the summer where people are traveling. They don't want to pay for a car or they don't want to rent a car. They could take the train. Somebody traveling from Jacksonville to, let's see, if they wanted to go to the Panama City Beach, you could go there instead of driving. Or somebody wanted to go from the small town like Lake City to Jacksonville, they wouldn't have to drive. Or some people might not have access to cars, they can just take a bus or walk or take their bike your bike to the nearest train station and take the train to a major city. Coast of Studios, I mean the live stream, I'll watch that later. So yeah, and obviously every time a rail project is brought up, the oil and gas airlines will try to do as much propaganda as they could. It's just like when a new route is proposed, the Freight railroads try to back it down. That's what they're gonna do too. And, cons and what people use it, as I explained, people that don't have access to a car would use it because they could take a train. And that's also much cleaner than taking a car or a plane or a bus. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if anybody would ride a bus, a long distance bus, because those are either those are not clean or they're too cramped. It kind of destroys your privacy, but yeah. And construction time. As I said, I don't know what the cost would be. I don't know what the construction time would be. So, yeah. Um, the next episode, I'm already planning because this is this is up. This is uh, being filmed a week before. Because I have three videos up. I have the coaster video, which you probably saw. And the next week's video will be the Bridges of Delaware. And. Yeah. And by the way, this, the music you're hearing, if you can hear me, is uh, no copyright. I like to have no copyright music. Some nice casual music. Sorry, on the table that I'm on. It's uh, my. Keyboard, that's what my things are on the music stand, my tablet, and my phone, so I'm recording on my tablet. 
So yeah, so in the next episode for this will be uh, Atlanta to Charlotte. So Charlotte to Atlanta. Which I feel like this would be one that would be built. Because Charlotte and Atlanta are very close to each other and 95 is already backed up. And nice to be trying going at uh, 186 miles an hour. People will get there in two and a half hours compared to the four to six hours that it takes. Depending on traffic. So yeah. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please check out my Instagrams. I've already talked about those. Uh, if you want to see more coasts and bridges or uh, my personal things that I don't show on the channel, like um, if we went, if we go out to eat or something, I'll show food, pictures, and other things, the sky, weather. Or my dogs. So I'll probably show that on my other Instagram, my reptile Instagram. If you want to, if you want to learn about reptiles, I suggest you check out that because every Friday I give, I talk about a reptile. I give you facts about it, tell you if it's dangerous or not, and and should you keep this as a pet, and should you keep this as a collection. Or add it to your menagerie of things in your house. Yeah, but also if you want to check it out, check out my new YouTube channel, Reptiles2905. Which Instagram, it's Coast Bridge Productions. The coasts and bridges and trains and other things in my life that I don't show on the channels. And then check out my Instagram, Reptiles2905. And check out my other YouTube channel, Reptiles2905. If you want to subscribe, you can. If you're not interested in reptiles, you you can tell somebody that you know that's actually interested in that stuff. Oh yeah. Um. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video and tell your friends, your family, if they're interested in this stuff. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.